the Big Daddy G Show, the Big Daddy G Show. Here's your daddy. Hey kids, welcome to the Big Daddy G Show. Excuse me. I'm the Big Daddy G, and we're in Austin, Texas, in our brand new 1,200 square foot studio. So we went from 360 square feet to 1,200 square feet. And <clears throat> if memory serves me right, there's a song that uh, um, everybody sings when they move, you know, to a bigger place. We're moving on up to the east side. We finally got a piece of the pie. All right, some of y'all know who that song is from. Anyway, um, what we were going to do today is we were going to have a big setup for you, and we were going to have a big guest, <clears throat> but I changed uh, my mind on that because I felt that there was something a little more important going on um, that I think that you guys should know about and I wanted to share with you guys. Um, First, um, you know, Hurricane Harvey uh, hit Houston pretty good and Corpus and uh, uh, Rockport got it really good. Um, again, to the mayor, C.J. Wax, and Elena and all our friends in Rockport, um, our prayers are with you. And in Houston, <laughs> more than our prayers are with you. So uh, please, please. Um, you know, you're a Texan, so stand tough, because that's what we are. Texans are tough, and, um, and we can get through anything together. Alone, we can't do it, but together, we can get through anything. I also want to thank um, the um, Cajun <laughs> Navy uh, that came down to uh, Texas to help us all. Um, and, dude, you guys rock, man. Um, you were out there helping people that could not be gotten to. I mean, they just, there was no way. Um, and you guys have rescued animals. Uh, I actually saw um, a video where a deer came up to a boat. Uh, this is a full-grown deer. Came up to a boat and climbed in the boat. Now, for a full-grown deer to get on a boat with, you know, humans, um, th it's, that's pretty drastic, you know, for them, because for generations, they've been known to stay away from humans. So they ended up um, uh, saving that deer. So um, to the uh, Cajun Navy, uh, thank you for your service. And uh, for the Red Cross, for HEB, um, I know I'm forgetting people, but uh, for um, the Salvation Army, all these people, all you people, all of y'all that are out there helping, if you can't do it physically, you can do it financially. How can you do it financially? I'm broke, I don't have no money. Do it a dollar. Donate a dollar. Donate five dollars. Whatever you can, donate, um, because it's about to get worse. Um, we have a new hurricane coming into the Gulf. Um, I had just told um, my director a couple of days ago, two, three days ago, um, they were saying that it was going to go up to the northeast coast. And I told Tyrone, I said, uh, it's not going to go up there. It's going to go into our Gulf Coast again. So um, sure enough, there was uh, um, a shift in the hurricane and it's going to uh, hit part of Florida. I believe uh, the Dominican Republic, Cuba, they're all gonna get it hard because it's a category five. Now I have lived through a category five hurricane before and I was smacked down in the middle of it. So um, again, we're Texans and we're tough. So, you know, bring it, whatever you wanna bring, bring it, we'll make it but we're only gonna make it together. We can't make it apart. We can't, we have to have to be together on this. Um, 
<clears throat> this particular shirt is a shirt that I'm wearing that was uh, a design that my dad used to wear uh, in a shirt and shorts. And um, I wanted to tell you about uh, when I was uh, a little boy, I had jumped off of a dryer. And uh, this was right during a major hur uh, hurricane that was a Category 5. And um, I had jumped off the dryer and I fell with my right foot onto a can of Spam and that was already open. And I sliced my foot really good, dude, really, really good. And this is right in the middle of the hurricane. I mean, we were getting bombarded. I think it was 160 mile an hour winds. And uh, my dad got in his truck and drove me to the emergency room so I could get stitches so I wouldn't bleed to death. So thank you, Dad. Anyway, <clears throat> what we're going to do today is we're going to show you a, um, a video that I found. This, this was filmed in Florida. Um, and we want to thank the people uh, from Mac MacDade County who um, allowed us to be able to show you this film or this video that they made on how to be prepared uh, when it comes to a hurricane. Now, I know that we are far from the coast. Um, that's true. But we also have people that watch us that are on the coast. And that's why we're doing this. We're doing this for them, uh, this uh, show. Um, again, we had a whole setup. We were going to have, you know, couch and chairs and desk and the whole bit. But I decided that uh, this was more important. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you this video. And, it, and please, please pay attention. Um, I'm going to try to have this video put up uh, on our website uh, as fast as I possibly can so that if you need to go back and look at it again, you can. Uh, so, so, so that you can get prepared. Now here in Austin, we're going to get a lot of rain. Um, San Marcos also is going to get a lot of rain. So right now, um, in the next, I'm going to say 36, 24 to 30 hours, you need to start uh, recharging the batteries that you have. You need to get uh, fuel. You need to get, uh, you know, uh, a cooking stove, you know, things like that that you're going to need. You're going to need water. You're going to need food. Uh, again, I'm not trying to scare anybody. I'm just trying to prepare people uh, so that they know what is coming. Um, we're going to get a lot of rain, and since uh, our ground is still pretty soaked uh, from the last rains that we got from Harvey, um, you know, it's, uh, it's going to get a little bit worse than it was before. So please, please be prepared, okay? As they, uh, um, as they taught us in the Scouts, I am an Eagle Scout, so as they taught us in the Scouts, you have to be prepared for anything. Um, you can't be prepared for everything, but if you know something's coming, then you need to be prepared. So in, the in about uh, 10 seconds, we're going to go ahead and roll that uh, clip from McDade, uh, Florida. And again, uh, thank you very much uh, to Florida for letting us use this film. Uh, and we do uh, give credit uh, at the end of the film, so we didn't cut off the credit uh, for the film. So please, please pay attention, especially if you're close to the coast in the Gulf of Mexico, Florida, Louisiana, all your states that are on the coast, you need to pay attention to this video. Tyrone. Hello, my name is Vivian Gonzalez. And I'm Phil Farrell. As a native of Miami and local meteorologist, I know South Florida can be faced with many hazards. From wildfires to hurricanes, Miami-Dade County must be ready for any possible natural or man-made disaster. To help you be prepared for any possible emergency, the Miami-Dade County Office of Emergency Management has created the following video. As a resident, I strongly urge you to follow the steps laid out in this video and be prepared. It may save your life. Preparedness is the best protection against the dangers of natural and man-made disasters. But how do we prepare? The answer is simple, by following these four easy steps. Be informed. Make a plan. Get a kit and get involved. One of the major parts of being informed is understanding the potential threats you and your family may encounter. Miami-Dade County can face many different hazards and its residents need to be prepared for them. They include hurricanes, 
tornadoes, floods, wildfires, hazardous material releases, and terrorism. Knowing what to do before, during, and after a disaster will reduce stress, fear, and possibly save your life. That is why the first step of being prepared is to be informed. Several resources are available to help inform of emergency preparedness, and they include the local news media, Miami-Dade County's 311 information line, printed brochures, social media, and an internet webpage managed by Miami-Dade County Emergency Management. For those with mobile phones, emergency notification of immediate significant hazards can be received. For information on how to register your mobile phone for free to the county's program, Miami-Dade Alerts, visit www.miamidade.gov forward slash alerts. The most frequent hazard facing Miami-Dade residents is the threat of hurricanes. With winds able to reach upwards of 150 miles per hour, hurricanes can cause extensive damage, flooding, and loss of life. Hurricanes are powerful storms that are created when moisture evaporates from a large, warm body of water and enormous amounts of heated air twists high up into the atmosphere. Hurricanes can measure hundreds of miles across and can create widespread destruction. Forming primarily in the Atlantic Ocean and Caribbean Sea, hurricanes rotate in a counterclockwise direction. The center of the storm, or eye, is the calmest part of the storm. But don't be fooled with the calm of the eye. The strongest and most dangerous winds and rain immediately surround the eye of the storm, so it is important to stay sheltered during the entire storm. Since the force of wind increases dramatically with each slight increase in wind speed, the National Hurricane Center created a scale to better convey the dangers of an impending hurricane. As you can see, with each increase on the scale, the damage of the storm will increase by four times. Storm surge is historically the most dangerous part of a hurricane. No part of a storm has caused more damage or loss of life. These hurricanes have such powerful winds that while they move across the ocean, waves as large as 20 feet gather in front of them. Sometimes, spreading across hundreds of miles of coastline, the force of these waves increase as they approach the shoreline, and when they hit, they can easily cause devastation several miles inland. Considering that only six inches to a foot of water can sweep a car off the road, residents should take action in case of storm surge. That's why it's so important to know if you live in an area or zone that needs to evacuate. In order to remain informed once hurricane season begins, be sure to monitor any storm that may appear. Important information such as storm updates and evacuation orders will come via television, radio, social media, and emergency warning systems. As storms get closer to landfall, you may hear terms like hurricane watch and hurricane warning. What's the difference? A watch literally means be on guard. During a watch, monitor specific weather and be prepared to take action. A watch usually occurs 48 hours before the severe conditions of the storm are expected to hit. Discuss your emergency plan with your family and make sure any outdoor items are properly stored or secured. We don't need to take full preparatory actions, but we need to stay informed of the possible threat. Now, a warning, however, is issued 36 hours before storm landfall and means that full preparation needs to be made. It means that given all the meteorological expertise of people at the National Hurricane Center, experts believe the weather hazard is imminent and dangerous. It is important to take action. Grab the emergency kit you have prepared in advance and head to safety immediately. Both watches and warnings are important and being aware and prepared can save your life. During most hurricane seasons, more people die or get injured after the storm than they do during the actual storm period. Among the causes of injury are electrocution, fire, carbon monoxide poisoning, motor vehicle accidents, and injuries related to debris removal. To help prevent injury, keep in mind the following safety guidelines. Obey all curfew and emergency orders. Use caution when driving through damaged intersections. Remember to treat intersections with down traffic signals as a four-way stop. Avoid floodwaters. Water may be contaminated by oil, gasoline, or raw sewage. In addition, do not drive through flooded roads. Keep in mind that as little as six inches of water can cause you to lose control of your car. Stay away from downed power lines to avoid the risk of electric shock or electrocution. Use caution when assessing damage to your home or business. 
Watch out for gas leaks, unstable structures, stray animals, and other hazards. When using a generator, remember that they emit carbon monoxide. They should never be used indoors or near open windows. Follow guidelines in the instruction manual and remember to turn off the generator and let it cool completely before refueling. In addition, help ensure your family's safety from accidental poisoning by installing a carbon monoxide detector in your home. While hurricanes are the hazard that South Florida residents are most likely to face between June 1st and November 30th, it is important to learn about the other types of hazards that could occur in your area. To learn more about other threats facing Miami-Dade County, please visit www.miamidade.gov forward slash OEM. Before a disaster strikes, it's important for Miami-Dade residents to plan in advance what they'll do in case of an emergency. Being able to quickly act on a plan rather than preparing in the spur of the moment can help you and your family mitigate the impacts of a disaster. That's why the second step of being prepared is to make a plan. Since you and your family may not be together when an emergency occurs, it's important to create a family emergency plan that the whole family is comfortable with. This plan will help guide you on what to do before, during, and after a disaster. One main goal of your family emergency plan is to establish a plan for communication. Consider designating a specific family relative that your family members should try to contact during an emergency. A long distance contact is best as local phone lines may be damaged. If you need assistance with your emergency preparedness, consider getting help from a family member, close friend, or caregiver. As part of your planning, make sure to have printed information of your particular needs readily available during emergencies. Each person should fill out an emergency contact card that includes your contact's number, number of local authorities, and an address of a pre-established meeting place. Cards should be kept laminated in a wallet, purse, or backpack. In the event of an approaching hurricane, it is important to take the following actions. Monitor the news for storm advisories and local emergency information. Secure windows and glass doors with shutters. Bring in outside objects that can blow away, such as patio furniture, trash cans, and potted plants. If you own a car, fill your car with gasoline. If you own a boat, make sure your boat is properly secured. If you own a pool, shut off the power to the pump and add extra chlorine to the water. Do not empty the pool completely. You should plan to complete your hurricane preparations as early as 72 hours before the estimated landfall of the hurricane. Listen to the radio or television for news and follow instructions of local emergency officials. Before the beginning of the hurricane season, it's important to have your family emergency plan ready, which should include the completion of tree pruning around your home. One of the most important decisions you may have to make as a threat, such as hurricane or wildfire approaches, is whether you should evacuate or shelter in place. You should understand and plan for both situations. If the decision is made to evacuate, your family emergency plan should include evacuation locations and what supplies to bring. Identify more than one evacuation route as roads may be blocked and anticipate the possibility of taking other means of transportation out of your area. Since we live in a highly populated area, it may be easier to evacuate sooner than later, especially for families with small children or persons with functional needs. If you or a loved one has functional, medical, or specialized transportation needs, you may need to take additional steps when preparing your emergency plan. Persons with functional needs or anyone else who may need evacuation assistance should register with Emergency and Evacuation Assistance Program, or EEAP, in order to notify the county that you may need assistance with evacuating during an emergency or disaster. When an evacuation order is given, evacuation centers will be open where no one will be turned away and essential needs will be provided. While evacuation centers are an option to seek as shelter from a hurricane or other hazards, remember, they are a place of last resort. Evacuation centers are designed for protection and not comfort. You can visit www.miamidade.gov forward slash OEM or call Miami-Dade Answer Center at 311 to obtain important evacuation information, such as storm surge zones, evacuation center locations, the EEAP program, and emergency evacuation bus pickup sites. Lastly, don't forget to have a plan for your pets. Miami-Dade County also has pet-friendly evacuation centers available. There are circumstances when staying where you are during an emergency is the best decision. This process is called sheltering in place. 
If local authorities say conditions are too dangerous outside, you and your family should take immediate action to protect yourself and head to the predetermined safest room inside your home. The safest room to be in during a storm is an interior room with no windows, such as a bathroom or closet. Remember to bring an emergency supply kit with you and stay inside your safe room throughout the entire storm period. No family emergency plan would be complete without an emergency supply kit. When a disaster strikes, local responders may not immediately be available and may be blocked by debris or responding to locations that were more severely impacted. This in turn may lead to emergency responders not being able to provide help right away. This vital part of your emergency plan is the third step to disaster preparedness, and that is why you should get a kit. An emergency supply kit is a collection of basic items that should prepare you and your family to be self-sufficient for at least three days. Keep in mind, hazards in your area may keep first responders from reaching you quickly, and you may need to rely on your resources for longer. While there are many things that might make you more comfortable, think first about necessities. Here is a checklist of those necessities that should be included in your emergency supply kit. Water, one gallon per person per day for drinking and sanitation. At least a three-day supply of non-perishable food items such as canned goods, granola bars, peanut butter, and other items that do not require refrigeration. Try to include foods high in protein and fiber to keep you energized and full. Be sure to include a can opener. A battery-powered or hand-cranked radio with extra batteries to stay informed of disaster updates. A first aid kit. Make sure to include over-the-counter medications such as aspirin, as well as prescription medications such as insulin, heart medicines, or inhalers if necessary. Flashlight with extra batteries. Tools such as a wrench and pliers to turn off utilities that may cause hazards. Include items such as toilet paper, antibacterial cleaners, moist towelettes, garbage bags, and plastic ties for personal sanitation and hygiene. Place cash, photocopies of credit cards, identification cards, insurance documents, and other important family paperwork in a Ziploc bag or other waterproof container. Items for infants, such as formula, bottles, and diapers, as well as items for pets, including additional water and food, books, games, puzzles, or other activities for children. Other items, such as local maps, a whistle, matches, prescription medications, and a fire extinguisher may be helpful to your survival. When putting together your supply kit, try to keep all your items together in an easy-to-carry plastic container. Make sure to keep your supply kit in a designated place. Make sure all family members know where the kit is kept. If you need to evacuate your home, remember to take your emergency supply kit with you. By having all your necessities already packed, it will save you time leaving your home. It is important to regularly review and maintain your plan and emergency supply every six months. Practice fire and emergency evacuation drills with your family. Review emergency information, including contact numbers and how to dial 911 with all of your family members, especially children. Replace batteries and smoke detectors. Test and recharge your fire extinguishers according to the manufacturer's instructions. Replaced store food and water and replenished elements in emergency supply kits as necessary. Remember, each type of disaster may require additional supplies. For more information on emergency supply kits, visit ReadySouthFlorida.org. Coordinating with your neighbors and other members of your community on how your neighborhood is going to respond to possible threats can be valuable when a disaster hits. That is why the final step of emergency preparedness is to get involved. You can become a safety and emergency preparedness advocate in your community or become a volunteer member of your local Citizens Corps, local chapter of the American Red Cross, or another local community organization. Whether it's a major hurricane or just a bad fall, the true first responders during an emergency are generally our family and neighbors. Consider informing your neighbors of your emergency plan and preparedness and encourage them to make their own plan and coordinate with you. Visit www.miamiday.gov forward slash OEM for more information on free disaster training, such as the CERT Community Emergency Response Team Program. Whether it's your neighborhood, school, or place of business, your simple actions to prepare yourself and your family will make our community a stronger and safer place.
Mm. Hey kids, we're back. Again, thank you to Miami-Dade um, County, or Miami and Dade County, for letting us um, show you guys this uh, clip um, to how to be prepared for a hurricane. So remember the most important things. You have to have food for at least three days for uh, each, one, uh, each person that's there. Um, a gallon of water per day per person and you, you're, I know you're thinking, oh, that's crazy. What are you talking about? A gallon, you know, to, dude, uh, you're going to have to flush the toilet. And if you don't have water, guess what? So there are uh, uses. You're going to use the water. So um, make sure you charge your batteries. Make sure that you have gasoline in your vehicle. Make sure that, uh, you know, everything that's out in the yard is, is brought in that's, you know, can become a missile because, um even though we're not going to get here in Austin, we're not going to get, you know, 160, 170 mile an hour winds. We could get 80, you know, 70, 80 mile an hour winds. So make sure uh, that um, that all your stuff in your yard is put away that's light. Um, again, if you have pool, if you have a pool, and you have chairs, throw them in the water. Just throw them in the pool, and they'll sink down to the bottom, and they'll be safe. And after the uh, after the storm's over, you can pull them back out. Um, if you have animals, don't forget you're going to have to have water for your animals also, and you're going to have to have food for your animals. So make sure that you're prepared. If you have a generator, start it up tomorrow. Make sure that it's running at 100%. Uh, make sure that you have extra fuel for that generator. Um, my suggestion, because uh, if you have somebody in your home that's older or is, uh, uh, needs medical care, and you're gonna, they're going to need air conditioning, uh, you could always get a small window unit and run that off your generator. And that way they can stay cool. Um, what else? Make sure that you have a plan as to where you're going to go should it get really bad. Um, make sure that you have a phone number of someone that you can call uh, to let them know and make sure that they're, you know, uh, not in the, in the same area. Make sure that they're like in Wyoming or, you know, Oregon or Idaho or somebody, a relative or something, that each one of your family members knows to call to say, hey, I'm okay. You know, and then that way every time somebody calls them, they know, you know, that you're okay. Also have a place to meet. If you get to your house and it's flooded, you get to your apartment and it's flooded, or they've shut off the street or something, make sure that you have a place to go meet, uh, whether it be the, um, you know, Austin Convention Center, or could it be City Hall, or could it be, you know, some place that you all can meet so that you know um, where, you know, where to go to. So instead of you just, because we might lose, you know, cell phone tire, towers, and you're not going to be able to make a phone call. Uh, most people don't have uh, home phones anymore. So anyway, the best thing to do, and again, we're not trying to scare nobody. We just want to make sure that you're prepared because we're about to get hit with another storm. So we want you to be prepared. Uh, if you have any questions, you can uh, write us on the website and somebody will answer you. Um, if you have any questions, again, we're going to try to get this particular uh, show on the air as soon as possible so that you can see that video over and over and over again. Again, thank you to Miami and uh, Dade County for letting us use it. Um, one thing I noticed is that Texas does not have, uh, or I couldn't find one, uh, a preparedness uh, video. Do you need one? Hmm, we know who you can call. So, uh, please, please be careful out there. Um, another thing, um, I know that we've been doing uh, a lot of stuff that's really, really, really serious, and our show is more of an educational show, while we also like to have a good time. So now, uh, we have two segments or two clips that, that uh, we produced. Uh, one uh, is called Tyrone's, oh, I gotta get this, hold on, I got props. <laughs> They gave me a desk, and ta -da! this segment that you're about to see is called Tyrone's Pelotas. So here we go, Tyrone's Pelotas. Now, what is Tyrone's Pelotas? <laughs> How did we come up with the name Tyrone's Pelotas? Well, Tyrone is uh, Tyrone D. Smith, our director, is a very, very, very big. It's really not normal a very big uh, football fan. 
and basketball fan. Uh, this guy, you could ask him just about anything <laughs> about football and basketball, and he'll know the answer. It's scary. His father's the same way. So um, his father can tell you anything there is to know, and so can Tyrone. So I think you're going to really enjoy this new segment. It's called Tyrone's Pelotas. And Tyrone, if you want to roll that clip in about five seconds. Um, so um, I've never really been into sports that much. But uh, but this is it's kind of cool. So please, uh, if you get a chance, or you sit back and relax because it's pretty good. Oh, and after this segment, uh, we have a segment called uh, "Useless Information," and the reason I came up with this uh, segment was because anytime I'm out somewhere and nobody's talking about anything, I'll just say, "Hey, I got some useless information," and the people go, "Oh, yeah, 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 I like useless information." So now we're doing a segment called Useless Information. So um, I'm going to get rid of Tyrone's pelotas here. There we go. And um, Tyrone, whenever you're ready, let's see Tyrone's pelotas. Enjoy. Welcome to Tyrone's pelotas. Here, this is a sports segment. Um, I usually direct the TV show. I'm in the control room. But I love sports, I love cinema and television, so I figured I'd blend the two together and talk about Longhorns and the NFL. So I have a bit of sad news today. <sighs> I wanted to get all excited and say it's Longhorn time, but Mr. Herman, you ruined that moment for me because we lost. We lost to a score of 51 to 41 to Maryland, an unranked team who we had an 18 point um, difference or whatever. Basically, we were favored to win and we got whooped at our own stadium. So, Mr. Herman, um, it's only one game, the season's not over, but you're going to have to deliver soon, man. Because USC is to next week, dude. You got USC right around the corner, and what do you think is going to happen? They're going to hit you in the mouth, so you need to deliver. You need to show up. Shane Buscelli needs to do you know, short, immediate routes. You all need to run the ball effectively. I know you all put up 41 points, but, man, come on now. You all have to deliver. We have to have a top offense. We have to be – we were – all right, let me go back a little bit. So I was born and raised in Austin. Um, I'm a UT alumni or alum, alma mater, whatever you want me to say. Um, Longhorn football has always been dear to me, and it's, it's just sad whenever you see, you know, losses after losses over and over when, you know, you know, it's Longhorn football. We've been winning forever, and we've always been number one or at least the top five every year when I was growing up. You know, the Vince Young days, the Colt McCoy days. It's just it's tough to watch whenever. I know Tom Herman, you know, he graduated from UT, and he's coming back to UT to try to build a dy dynasty, you know, again. I know it's not going to be overnight, and I know there's going to be some ups and downs, but it's just kind of sad to start off the week with a loss. I'm sure they'll regroup and hit USC in the mouth. But man, dude, Maryland. Let's just let's just pause for a moment. Maryland. We lost to Maryland. <sighs> I don't know. So I'm gonna roll the clip to the top five plays of this game. And just so we can look at something good <laughs> in a loss, you know? <laughs> I want something good to show you. So here are the highlights. Roll the tape. Third and 20. Looks like some confusion for Maryland defensively. Bouchelle over the middle, complete to the end zone, touchdown! Amante Foreman, 33 yards! this and, and do whatever they with it do, do whatever they do with it afterward 
uh, they've got to move on. And, and he is a fantastic coach. And today we need to celebrate DJ Durkin as much as we've talked as we've talked about Tom Herman. Touchdown here for the Longhorns, not giving up. The touchdown for Colin Johnson, 32 yards. Made one start last year against Minnesota on third and eight. High oh throw, tip ball, intercepted. Picked off, going back the other way. Touchdown, Holton Hill, 31 yards. And Green has it blocked. Return the other way. And Texas is going to get one back. on to punt. Hemphill Maps is back. Catched it at the eight. Oh boy. Hemphill Maps down oh the sideline. There he goes. No flags. 91 yard punt return touchdown. All right. We are back. And so we're going to shift gears um, to the NFL. Um, so this is Tyrone Pelotas, and this is the segment we do. My name is Tyrone D. Smith, and we do Longhorn football, and we do the NFL. Because, you know, got to keep people happy. So i got to bring out my gear to get a little fancy. Sorry, this may, might make a little bit of noise, but... Orale, I got the Buccaneers. See, I even brought a Hawaiian shirt, you know, just, you know, because Mr. G, the big day G, you know, with his Hawaiian shirts, I got myself one. You know, I'm a Buccaneers fan. Who who would know, you know, a dude from Austin says, you know, I like the Buccaneers. Um, yeah, I like the Buccaneers. I grew up watching them. Uh, they're my favorite NFL team. I didn't like the Cowgirls. I'm sorry, Cowboys fans. You're not going to like me because I'm going to hate on Cowboys for a little bit. Um, you know, a, a friend of mine, or actually my cousin, gave me a, uh, a Tampa Bay Buccaneers T-shirt when I was in third grade. And so I wore the T-shirt, and I used it as my Halloween uh, costume. I, I cut, like, strips into it, and it was, like, blood for the costume. And I started watching them. And I was about third grade, and I started watching them consistently. They had a really good defense with, uh, like, John Lynch, Warren Sapp, and uh, Simeon Rice, a, a bunch of really good defensive players. And, you know, I grew up when they were really good, and I saw them win the Super Bowl. So ever since then, I've been a Buccaneers fan. So it's kind of hard not to like them when you watch a team win the Super Bowl. So I started watching them, and I've been a fan ever since. So right now we're going to shift gears from the Buccaneers, and I'm going to give you my picks for this week because the NFL starts on September 7th, and it's the game kicks off. It's going to be the Chiefs and Patriots, um, and I'm going to give you my picks. And I'm also going to give you my Super Bowl prediction. I'm not going to say the score because that's a little too much. I'm just going to say who I'm going to pick to go to the Super Bowl and potentially win. I wonder what team. I wonder what team. Okay, so weekly picks, um, I have uh, the Patriots over the Chiefs, um, Bills over the Jets, sorry, sorry, Dad, I know you're a Jets fan, um, Eagles over Redskins, there you go, Eagles over Redskins, Oakland over Titans, that's kind of a tough one, I, I could lean either way, but I think uh, Derek Carr is going to, you know, throw the ball everywhere. All right, then I got the Bucks over Dolphins. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? The Bucks over Dolphins, of course. You know, because I'm a Bucks fan, I got to. I have to choose the Bucks every week. Sorry. All right, and then we have Texans over Jags. Um, you know, I love Houston, and uh, first I want to say, you know, the flood just recently happened. Uh, the hur hurricane hit, and I just want to say, um, you know, I'm so everyone. You know, I, I just pour my out. I lived in Houston uh, part of my life, and I, you know, I went to the film festival in Rockport, and they were amazing people. And I, I just, 
my heart goes out to all the people that are struggling. If you can, please donate to the American Red Cross. Um, there's a foundation in Houston. You can check with uh, Mayor Adler here in Austin. He just recently posted a video how you can help um, the hurricane evacuees, how you can provide them with food, because we're going to have 7,000 evacuees coming to Austin from Houston and the, the coastal areas. So donate, man. Go volunteer. There's plenty of places you can volunteer. Austin Pets Alive are rescuing animals. You know, they're uh, food donations, you know, bring blankets, food, diapers, you know, ev you know, deodorant, whatever you got, whatever you can, you know, because these people are in need. And there's supposed to be another hurricane on the way. They don't, they can't determine whether it's going to hit what part of the coast in the Gulf, but it's going to affect us. So please donate. All right, so back to the picks. I said Texans over Jags because Texans are going to whoop the Jags. You know what? Um, and then I got, um, I'm sorry, this is my paper. This is, this is for my notes. All right, so Lions over the Cardinals because Stafford's going to throw the ball everywhere. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, George. I know you like the Cardinals, but they are going to get whooped. Um, it's just because they have a really good receiver core and their defense is playing really well. I know the Lions are going to destroy them. Okay, so now we got the um, Falcons over the Bears. Um, I do not like the Falcons because they are in the same division as the Buccaneers, and it just I've never been a real big fan. Even though they just went to the Super Bowl, they're, they're going to whoop Bears really bad. And then I'm going to pick uh, the Bengals over the Ravens. You know, that's kind of a hard pick to choose, but I chose the Bengals. And uh, the next one is Steelers over Browns. That's kind of an easy one, but I I think Kaiser's going to make it a close game. He's a really good quarterback, and he's going to air it out with Ben Roethlisberger. I just don't think they have enough firepower to push through, so that's why I pick Steelers over Browns. And then uh, Rams over Colts. Um, the reason why I'm picking that is because they don't know if Andrew Luck is going to uh, play. Um, his injury is kind of up in the air. So, um, yeah, man. Rams are going to show up. Los Angeles Rams. And then I picked Green Bay over the Seahawks. Sorry, Seahawks fans. I know you all have a lot of bandwagoners since you all won the Super Bowl recently. But um, Green Bay is going to own you all. Aaron Rodgers is going to show up. He's going to distribute the ball around. It's going to be like 500 passing yards, even though you'll have the legion of no longer boom because um, y'all are getting old. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Y'all are great players, but especially Earl Thomas. Longhorn. Sorry. Um, then I got Panthers over 49ers. I do not like the Panthers, but the 49ers are just not looking very good um, lately. Yeah, I, I. It's almost inv inevitable to talk about you know the Forty ers because Colin Kaepernick was on the show, or on the team, not the show. But there's a lot of stuff going on with uh, Colin Kaepernick. Can we go to this camera? Um, you know, because of the whole uh, him kneeling, which he has the right to do that. He has the right to kneel. Um, this is not a political show, but I just want to touch on this because it's it's been at the for forefront of the NFL and why you know there's been concussions. Then they have this going on with um, people kneeling because of police brutality. The idea that America, um, the flag doesn't reflect what it it should mean, you know, because all these people are are being killed. Um, and beaten or wh whatever you want to say. Um, uh, by police and there's a lot of injustice you know we had you know election fraud there's a lot of things going on um, so he's kneeling for uh, for a reason you know he's trying to stand up to something people may say he should have done it differently he might have handled it differently but he's a talented quarterback and he should be on an NFL team right now um, but he's not and he, he took a stand, and I'm not going to say he's a bad person. He's not a horrible player. He's doing something that he thinks is right, and more power to him. That's all I'm going to say about Colin Kaepernick. I wish him the best, and more power to you, man. You're, you're doing a lot of good things for our, 
for the United States and bring awareness to injustice to uh, African Americans. So I'll leave it at that. We try not to touch political stuff, but that's the only thing I had to say because it's been bothering me not saying anything about it. So for uh, Sunday night football, it's a big match, Giants versus Cowboys. Um, the Cowboys are going to bring it on this one, but I'm picking Giants over Cowboys. I'm sorry, Cowgirl fans out there. You're not going to like me, but that's that's okay. Um, the Giants just have a really good receiver core. They have uh, Odell Beckham. They recently picked up, um, I can't remember his name right now, but he um, he played on the Jets. What is his name? Great, great wide receiver. Um, their tandem is going to be good. They got Victor Cruz. They got um, Odell Beckham and then a guy from Jets who just recently signed with the team. So they're going to have a really good offense. Eli Manning's going to distribute the ball. Their defense is amazing. Their safeties. Um, Lando Collins is freaking amazing. And then uh, so basically I picked Giants over Cowboys. And then we have Minnesota over Saints. Um, I would go with the Saints, but I think Minnesota is going to show up. Um, Minnesota is going to show up, and it's going to be intense. They're going to run the ball down their throat. I know Adrian Peterson wants to get this one, but he's not going to. And um, finally, it's Broncos over Chargers. They're just going to show up. Their defense is amazing. They can rush the passer. Rush the passer? Very well. So, all right, so I got one more thing to say for Tyrone's Pelotas. Um, we're going to finish with um, the Super Bowl prediction. So I am going to pick for the AFC the Patriots, and for the NFC I'm going to pick the Buccaneers. Uh, I think Jameis Winston is going to produce this year. <coughs> I know they're going to make the playoffs. And they're gonna they're gonna make the Super Bowl. I believe they're gonna make the Super Bowl. Um, they're gonna put up a real good fight against the Patriots, but I think the Patriots are gonna show up and win. Um, so that's my Super Bowl prediction. Um, this is what I have today. Um, you'll hear more from me every week on the Big Daddy G Show. This is Tyrone D. Smith, and this is Tyrone's Pelotas. So y'all take care. I'm gonna go. Um, Watch some football. And now this. Useless. Useless information. By the Big Daddy G. Mm. Mexican martinis lift you up. Hi, kids. Welcome to a brand new exciting segment. So many people that I meet on the streets and stuff, they're all excited about this, um, this useless information that I have. And for the longest time I thought, dude, nobody cares about this stuff. But um, I was very surprised as to how many people really like to hear useless information. So we're doing a segment called Useless Information, just for you. And we're going to have, um, I'm going to be doing different characters um, every week so that you guys can, you know, have fun with this. So right now would be a good time to pour that glass of wine or drink that beer or that Crown and Coke or that Mexican martini or smoke an organic cigarette. So what is the first very first useless information that I have for you. It's called pineapples. Now, you're sitting there going, what the hell, about, what, do, what do we need to know about pineapples? Well, you don't need to know this. That's why it's called useless information. All right, so this is what we're gonna do. Pineapples, I'm gonna show you how pine, pretend this is a pineapple, okay? Now, pineapples, you know, they have the green leaves on the top. Well, everybody thinks that pineapples grow underground or grow on the ground, but actually, pretend this is the green leaves here, the pineapple actually grows above. It grows above the green leaves. So there, 
there's you some useless information. And I'm going to throw you a little extra on pineapples. I just remembered. Pineapples take two years. Dose, two years to grow. Okay? Which uh, people, uh, when they have the pineapple, you know, they taste it. Mm, but you want to try something really cool. Put some salt on the pineapple. Not a lot, just a little bit of salt. If you got pink Himalayan salt, that's even better. But put a little bit of salt on there, take a bite. Oh my God, it's delicious. Thank you, Dad, for giving me that uh, awesome recipe to, on how to eat a uh, pineapple. All right, so that's the first thing I had for you. All right, the second uh, useless information that I have for you is uh, what does it mean when somebody gets caught red-handed? I know you've heard the saying before, here is the, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? The definition of being caught red-handed. A long time ago, uh, this actually uh, originated in England, if I remember correctly. Whenever um, a neighboring farmer would go to his neighbor or down the road or whatever and steal one of their sheep or cows, or, uh, they had to cut it up immediately because if the police showed up, um, and caught the cow there, then, you know, they'd be in trouble and go to jail. So what they would do is they would steal the cow or the, or the sheep or goat or something, and, and they'd take it and they'd put it in their barn and they'd cut it up as fast as they could. They'd skin it and gut it and everything. And if the police showed up with the neighbor and you were sitting there cutting up the cow or the sheep or the goat and you had blood on your hands, well, that's where they caught red-handed. That's where they got that uh, meaning, caught red-handed. So there. So that's number two. Number three is back in England, where did the name or the saying jailbird come from? Jailbird was actually uh, originated in England because what they would do is they would, uh, if you were a criminal, if you were caught stealing or whatever, they would put you in this cage and then they would hang you in the cage in the town square so that everybody that walked through the town square could see you in this cage and that's why they came up with the saying jailbird so that's um, that's number three okay number four number four is why do dogs walk around in a circle before they lie down and you've seen dogs do this and why do they do it I'm about to tell you why, because this is useless information. So here it is. Useless information. Why do dogs go around in circles? Because when dogs lived out in the woods, well, there's a lot of bugs on the grass. So what they do is they would walk around in a circle to scare off whatever bugs were on the ground so that they could lie down and not, you know, be bitten by any anything. Spiders or whatever, scorpions, whatever. So that's why dogs go in a circle and then lie down okay so number five why does your dog howl have you ever noticed that sometimes you're just sitting there and all of a sudden your dog will start howling you know something like that sound familiar your husband might make the same sounds from time to time so anyway the reason the dogs howl like that is because there is a pitch that they are hearing that you can't hear and I can't hear, but they can hear it. So what they do is they howl to be able to drown out that pitch because that pitch is hurting their ears. So there, there's some more useless information. And that's it for this segment of useless information just for you. Thanks for tuning in. And don't forget next week, we're gonna have another segment of useless information, but it won't be me. It'd be a totally different character. It might look like me. So stay tuned, kids. I'll see you later. Peace. Ah, delicious. Hey, kids. We're back. So I hope you enjoyed those two segments. Um, I want to make sure that UT and all the UT alumni and all the UT students know that we love UT and we love the UT uh, football team and the cheerleaders too. <laughs> anyway, um, I also want to do a, a quick 
Thank you to, hey, Jerry. Uh, Jerry O'Brien, who um, helped us with uh, the UT uh, props. Thank you very much, Jerry. I also want to thank uh, Bill Murray for coming in and doing the uh, song, the Useless Information song. I also want to thank um, Tyrone D. Smith for coming in and doing the segment, um, the uh, sports segment. Um, I want to thank uh, C.J. Wiedenbeck, or is it Wiedenbach? I always get that wrong, but anyway, it's C.J. Beck, C.J. Wiedenbeck. Um, I also want to thank Victoria Brooks, uh, Nikki Skorori, Skorori. Um, and the last thing, uh, or the last couple of things that I wanted to talk to you guys about was um, being prepared for the hurricane. I know, I know I'm repeating myself, but those of you that know me know that I like to make sure you get it. So um, I, I want to make sure, <laughs> I don't know why, but um, maybe because I don't know how to spell his name, but uh, Segan, um, what, Bretsky is our sound guy, and uh, I didn't write his name down to thank him because I don't know how to spell it. So I'm still trying to come up with a good nickname for him. So anyway, make sure you have plenty of water, plenty of food. Remember, one gallon per person per day, um, and also for your pets. They're going to need water also. Make sure you have enough food, and try to, be, try to do at least three days. Um, five would be better, but at least three. Uh, batteries, food, water. Make sure your vehicle has plenty of gas so that if you need to bug out, you know, if you need to evacuate, then you're going to have to get up and go. And if your car doesn't have gasoline, hmm, then you're not going anywhere. So um, make sure that you have all those things. Uh, I also want to thank uh, Austin Pets Alive for, uh, for doing what they do, you know. Uh, I want to thank Austin Energy for doing what they do. Uh, you guys work really, really hard, um, and you probably don't get paid what you're worth, but, uh, but you guys do a great job, and thank you. Um, not once did I lose power um, this last storm. So thank you. Thank you very much for that. Um, I want to thank uh, Steve Adler, uh, the mayor of Austin, uh, for doing such an awesome job at what he does. And he does it really well. Uh, so Steve, um, I'm going to take a sip for Steve. Hmm. Steve, that sip was for you. <sighs> what else? Uh, the American Red Cross. Uh, <sighs> Dude, Salvation Army, HEB, sending uh, trucks out there to Houston, the Houston area. Uh, Corpus Christi area, their uh, HEB, you rock, man. Whataburger donated $2 million in the help. Um, so and just remember that you are Texans, and you are tough. And we have been through a lot worse than this hurricane, and we will be through a lot worse than this hurricane. So just remember that you are Texans and you are tough, and together we can make this happen. And Viva Mexico, and to my brothers in Mexico, Viva Mexico. I hope what do you know? The Big Daddy G Show. The Big Daddy G Show. The Big Daddy G Show. I hope what do you know? The Big Daddy G Show. The Big Daddy G Show. The Big Daddy G Show. I hope what do you know? The Big Daddy G Show. The Big Daddy G Show. The Big Daddy G Show.